Hey everyone, in this video, we will master the Messages API from Anthropic. First, we will create an API key to access their library. Then we will install the Anthropic library and explore the Messages API. We will cover different model types and when to use one. Next, we will dive into key parameters like max tokens, stop sequences, temperature, top P, top K, then finally, I will show you how they work together to control the generated response, which is very important. After this video, you will be very comfortable working with Messages API, creating your own conversational experience. Let's get started. I'm currently in my cloud account. Here you can go to your account settings. Click API console. And here you can create a API keys. Click this one. And create key. You can name it, then create key. So you got a key, now copy the key. After copying this key, we can go to your VS code. So currently I'm in my VS code. I have a file called .environment. So I'm going there. So here it has some key. Let's delete this. And I'm pasting my new key. So once this is done, we can go here and we can start working with our messages api let's start with installation of this library to install anthropic you can do pip install anthropic upgrade so when i installed this yesterday it was 0 0.16 now it's 0 0.19 so now the installation is done now let's move to messages api since our api key is on dot environment file we can use this library dot environment to load the anthropic api key so let's run this. So now we are getting the API key by using os.getenvironment OS anthropic API key. So the first step is we have to create client. The client can be created using anthropic.anthropic class and you can pass the API key. Once this is done, we can create a message. In the message, we can use client.messages.create. So the model I'm going to use is Cloud3 Opus. 2024 02 29 which is the recent advanced model and this max token is compulsory we are using like 1000 tokens and the model name is also compulsory then you can have a temperature i will talk about the temperature later in the session but now let's move to the other ones system here i am saying you are an expert travel guide then in the messages i have two things role and content the role i am starting with user the content top places to visit in Sydney. So let's run this. It takes around 20 seconds to run. Okay, I got the results. So let's display the results using IPython display. Here you can see the results, which looks good. Sydney Opera House and Harbour Bridge and Blue Mountains. This looks really excellent. Now let's move to the other ones. So currently, Cloud supports two models. Opus and Sonnet. In future, they are also planning to support Haiku. So let's focus on these two. So far, we have used Opus. The Opus took around 21 seconds to run the same. Now we are going to use the Sonnet model. The Sonnet model is a little bit smaller compared to uh, Opus. To use Sonnet, we can use Cloud3 Sonnet 2024 29 and rest everything is the same. Let's run this. We got the output in eight seconds. So this looks very similar and it also mentions some new things that I haven't seen before, which looks good. So now let's try to understand when to use what models. So as we know, currently Cloud3 supports three models, Opus, Sonnet and Haiku. So Opus is their most powerful model and Sonnet is like next powerful one. So this is very similar to GPT-4 and this is very similar to GPT-3.5. And Haiku is like a smallest model and which is very fast. They haven't released this yet. They are planning to release it very soon. So as you can see, each model has its own strength. So if you are dealing with really complex problem, I recommend using Opus. And if you are de dealing with some easy or small problems, you can focus on more on Haiku or Sonnet. It's up to you. Then all the three models, it supports different languages, which is very helpful. And all the models are vision. We can combine images and text in the same model, which is very 
helpful. And you can see the latest API model name. Currently, this supports these two. And in the future, they are planning to release Haiku. And all three follows the same messages API that we are going to learn in this session. And here you can see the Haiku is the fastest. And Sonnet is also fast. Opus is a little bit slow, but not too bad. And all the three models has 200,000 token window, which is really good. And output tokens you will get like 4096 tokens and here you can see the cost and all the three model has the same training cutoff August 2023. So here you can see the cost and intelligence. So Opus is the highly intelligent model and it costs like $15 for million tokens and you can see the range. So now let's try to understand messages ABA. So to create a message, we will create a list that list contains text and also images. So we can combine both text and images in the same messages list. The model will generate the next message in the conversation based on the input. Let's say you have two conversation in a list. If you pass that list as a message, you will get the response as a third message that uses the previous two conversations. The messages API is suitable for single queries or multi-turn conversation without maintaining state. So now let's move into understanding important parameters. To create a messages API, we need three things, model, messages, max tokens. So model, you can use Opus or Sonnet and messages, which is a list of message objects representing the conversation history, then max tokens an integer specifying the maximum number of tokens to generate in the response. It doesn't guarantee that it will generate up to that token, but it won't cross that token number that you mentioned in the max tokens. Then let's move into messages format. So each message in the list that has two things. One is role. The role can be user or assistant and content. Content is the message that you want to communicate with the model. Then you can send a single user message or multiple alternating user and assistant messages. So you can have a list that contains user, assistant, then user, assistant, like that. The first message must always have the user role. Then if the last message has the assistant role, the model will continue directly from the content in that message. So it will continue from there. So we will see how that looks like. So here you can see how an example of single user message looks like. You can see a list that contains a dictionary. In the dictionary, it has role, which is user and content, and you can see some message. Then multiple conversation turns, which means you will have a user and the next message will be assistant. Then the next message will be user. Then after these three inputs, the model will output assistant. Then partially filled response. Here you can see the role, user, you have some question and role assistant. And in the content, to get the most out of your visit to the Sydney Opera House, I recommend, which means the model will continue from this sentence, I recommend, and then it will continue from the rest. That's called partially filled response. So which is quite handy during function calling. In cloud, the function calling is all dependent on partially filled response. You will see that in the next sessions. And to add images, there is a way to add image. I'm going to dedicate a complete session only for images. I'm going to dedicate a complete video for images that I'm going to share tomorrow. Please subscribe my channel to know more about cloud APIs. So now let's talk about each parameter. Let's start with max tokens. So tokens are the smallest unit a model can process and generates. So previously, when I was exploring OpenAI library, I created a dedicated blog post understanding different parameters of OpenAI chat completion model. So what we are currently exploring is messages API. The messages API is very similar to chat completion. So you can also go through this one to understand more about the tokens, temperature, the formula behind the temperature and a few visualization because OpenAI library, they have done something like probabilities. By using the probabilities, I can show how the words are chosen in each probable 
values. So this is quite helpful. I'm not going to distract too much now. So let's focus on cloud max tokens now. So previously you have seen 10 responses when we used max tokens as 1000 because uh, we asked the same question previously and our model responds 10 places. So now let's limit the max tokens to 100 and see what happens. As you can see, there is a cutoff. After it reaches the 100 tokens, it won't progress further. It will stop immediately. So that's why this max tokens is very important. And this is an yeah, important parameter, which is a compulsory one. Now let's move to stop sequences. This stop sequences is quite handy when you deal with function calling. But now let's try to understand what stop sequences are. So there is a parameter called stop sequences, which is a list. Here you can pass any value. As soon as the model output this number, this value, the response will stop. It won't generate further. So let's run this. So you will see up to four items. When it reaches five, it stops. So you can see only four. There is no five. Even though we asked 10 items, it stopped because we controlled the behavior by using stop sequences, which is a list. You can also add many items. Now temperature. Temper temperature is the most important parameter in messages API. So it controls the amount of randomness injected into the response. The default value for the te temperature is one and it ranges from zero to one. Use the temperature closer to zero for analytical multiple choice and closer to 1 for creative and generative task. Note that even with temperature of 0, it's not deterministic. The results will not be fully deterministic. So now let's use temperature 0 and see what happens. So here you can see the response like Sydney Opera House. I asked top 10 places to visit in Sydney with marketing slogan for each place. So you can see some slogan here. And now I'm going to ask the same question with temperature one. You may find it's more creative compared to temperature zero. So here you can see some of the responses. You might see some new words like waterfront, indulge, and it could be a little bit creative compared to the previous ones. So now let's move to top P, which is also called nucleus sampling. So in nucleus sampling, we compute the cumulative distribution over all the options for each subsequent token in decreasing probability order and cut it off once it reaches a particular probability specified by top P. You should either alter temperature or top P, but not both. I know it's too much going on here. Let me show you what I did here. So this is my blog. So here I have written about nuclear sampling. So let's assume you got 20 words and each word has some probability value. 0 0.19, 0 0.12, 0 0.10, things like that. So here we are calculating the cumulative probability, which means we are adding the previous values. So let's say you are in this word, which is word three, which is four. So you have to add the previous probabilities to get this number. So now let's say you want top P as 0 0.5. It will consider only these four words to choose. So the next word will be chosen by these four options. It won't consider the remaining things. Let's say you are choosing cumulative probability as one, which means it will use all the words in the probable to consider the next token. I hope it makes sense. Now let's use top P as 0 0.2. You might see most probable words. So you can go through this response. And when I increase the top P to 0 0.9, which means we are considering a lot of word options to the model. You may find some new words there. So you can see some new words like Aussie trio, things like that. Now let's learn about top K. Only sample from the top K options for each subsequent tokens, which means let's say you, if you use top K as five, which means you are considering only the first five highly probable token to consider for sampling. So this is used to remove long tail, low probability values. So this is recommended for advanced use cases only. You usually only need to use temperature. That's what Claude recommend. And let's use top K equal to five. 
So here the words are very predictable because we are using the first five tokens. So we are not seeing any complicated words or new words. So now when I use top k equal to 100, you might see some new words because we are considering first 100 words to sample. So this looks good. Now let's putting it all together, which means we are going to add temperature, top p, top k, everything here. Actually cloud don't recommend doing this. They ask us to focus more on only on temperature. In only very rare cases, you will think about these two. So let's run this. So this could be more creative because we increase the temperature. Our top P is full and top K is thousand words. So you might see some lot of new words and more creative. So this looks very good. I hope this is very helpful in the next session. In the next session, I'm going to teach you how to use messages API with streaming. And after that, we'll learn about API of images and how to use JSON mode, then function calling. So please subscribe my channel.